Okay, so this is the screencast for your worksheet 6 on electrolysis. So let's look at the first question. An electric current is passed through two equal solutions arranged in series. Two solutions used were copper 2 sulfate and uh, silver nitrate. So we use inert electrodes for both solutions. So let's analyze this diagram first. Okay, remember that a long line for a battery is the positive terminal, the short line is negative. So if we follow the follow the, the line, you can see that this will be your negative electrode. Correspondingly, this must be positive. Okay, then this must be negative, this must be positive. Right? Okay, so um, the flow of electrons should go like this, where this is where your electrons are supplied, since it's from the battery. Your positive terminal always provides, uh, gives out electron, and your negative terminal should receive the electron, and here, electrons will move back up. Okay, so let's decide, uh, over on this side for silver nitrate, what are the species present and which will be on which side? Okay, we have silver ions, and then we have uh, nitrate ions, obviously. Then we must also consider H plus and OH minus. So the positive electrons, uh, the positive cations will move towards the negative electrode. Okay, so at the negative electrode, you have AG plus and H plus to choose from. Over at the other electrode, we need to choose between hydroxide and nitrate. Okay, so which of the uh, following will be preferentially oxidized or reduced? Now you need to recall the reactive uh, electrochemical series. So for the electrochemical, uh, maybe I already are. Okay, for the electrochemical series, we have uh, please stop calling me. Uh, zebra I like Hua Chong What is Hichang? Oh, hydrogen Hua Chong uh, Silver and Gold Okay, so remember that down the series, it is easier to oxidize, uh, easier to reduce, sorry, reduce it to the metal. So let's highlight uh, hydrogen, hydrogen is here, and then we have over here silver. Silver is below the hydrogen here, silver is below hydrogen, hence we can say that silver is the one that will be preferentially reduced. Now let's look at the other side. Between hydroxide and nitrate, remember that there are three uh, ions that will never be discharged. Uh, fluoride. I can't remember which is on top, but it doesn't matter. Uh, there's nitrate and then there's sulfate. These three, they will never be discharged. Okay, then we have uh, chloride. Bromide, iodide, and hydroxide. Again, the lower you go, easier to oxidize. But remember that for let me just use red color. Okay, for this, they will never be uh, oxidized. So between these two ions, we need to look at. Hydroxide will definitely be the one that is preferentially oxidized. Okay, let's look at the other side. Maybe I change the color again. Purple. So I have copper 2 sulfate this time. Again, um, for the negative electrode, is where your cations will move to. So we have Cu2 plus. We also have H plus. Here, we have your hydroxide as well as your sulfate. Remember that sulfate will never come out. So, hydroxide will be the one that's evolved. Over here, copper is actually 
below your hydrogen in the electrochemical series. So copper is also the one that is preferentially oxidized, uh, reduced. Okay, so what will be the gas that's given off at one of the electrodes in each solution? Notice that for both, uh, both setups, uh, hydroxide ions are the ones that's being oxidized. So if you remember the half equation, hydroxide will form oxygen gas and water. Now, students, some students have problem balancing this equation, so let's try this together. So if we see that there's two, two oxygen here, usually we balance by a two here, right? But know that there's one more hydrogen here, uh, one more oxygen here on the right hand side. So you can't have it uh, in trees as well. Okay, let, let's try three. If I have a tree here, then I have three hydrogen, but two hydrogen on the right hand side. Based on the, the formula here of water, you know that the number of atoms of hydrogen must be an even number. So let's try the next largest even number, which is 4. So if I have 4 hydroxide, I mean, it means I have 2 water, right? So after you calculate 8, actually it's correct already. Then we balance the charges. On the left hand side of the equation, there are 4 negative charges. So where do I place my electrons to balance the charges? I need to put it on the right hand side. How many electrons in total? 4 to balance the 4 negative charges. So what is the gas that's being evolved here? Uh, it should be your oxygen gas. Ah, yeah, oxygen gas. Name the electrode from which the gas was given off. The electrode that gives off um, oxygen gas, is it a cathode? Or an anode. Remember the the uh, mnemonic. I always cannot pronounce that word. Okay, N ox and cat. Uh, red cat. Okay, so you must ask ourselves: Is this an oxidation or reduction reaction, and why? Okay, this is a oxidation reaction since it lose electrons. So if it's oxidation, it means that this is your anode. Okay, so what is the electrode that the gas was given off? Anode. The equation, oh, yes, I've written it here. Let's just copy and paste this. Okay, a metal coating was deposited on one of the electrode in each solution. Name of the electrode, obviously it must be the opposite one. Since it's not an anode, it must be a cathode. Write the ionic equations for the metals deposited in each solution. So, um, for the copper 2 sulfate solution, we say that copper 2 plus is the one that is being discharged, right? So we have Cu2 plus here, equal state. Okay, then it should form Cu metal. So where do I add in the electrons to balance the charges? Okay. Because on the left hand side I have two positive charges, on the right hand side I'm neutral. So I need to add two electrons to the left hand side such that both sides are neutral. For the silver nitrate solution, I have Ag plus Aq getting one electron to become silver. Okay, let's look at the next question. A strip of moistened filter paper is laid on a microscope slide. Drop of silver nitrate solution is placed near one end. On the other side, we have potassium iodide. Okay, using inert electrodes. Okay, so uh, when we do such questions, you always need to look out for what is the type of electrode and what are the solutions. Okay, after some time, a pale yellow streak appears as shown in the diagram below. So what do you think has happened? Give the formula of the ions present in silver nitrate and potassium iodide. So they say um, formula. So let's look at their formula. We should have 
silver nitrate AG plus and O3 minus. You must also not forget H plus and OH minus. For potassium iodide, K plus, I minus, H plus, and OH minus. What are the ions that will diffuse towards number one? The anode. Okay, so anode is the positively charged terminal as they've written there. Positively charged, the negative ions will move towards it. But you can think of it as N ions move towards anode. Ah, makes sense, right? Uh, OH minus and all your N ions, we have these, these, these. Okay, so we have O3 minus I minus. The other one, AG plus, H plus, K plus. As the ions move towards the respective electrodes, Two ions cross path causing the formation of the yellow strip. Name the compound responsible for the pale yellow strip and write the ionic equation for its formation. Okay, so here you need to think what could possibly cause the pale yellow strip. Look at all the ions that are present. Okay, so what is going on here? Um, silver nitrate solution. Here we have Ag plus and O3 minus H plus and OH minus. Here we have K plus I minus H plus OH minus. So since this is the negative terminal, my cations will move in this direction. Okay, then uh, so does my this H. Then for my anions, we will move in this direction. So as they are moving, what are the ions that will meet each other and give you a precipitate? Okay, the answer is, if you recall your QA, silver iodide. Silver iodide is insoluble, so it forms a precipitate. So what is the name of the compound? It is silver iodide. Note that if you written the formula, it is wrong because they ask you for the name. What is the ionic equation? Very simple. Silver plus equals plus I minus equals gives you AgI solid state. Explain why the streak appears nearer to the cathode. So if you think about it, they're asking you why is this streak nearer here than it is like why is it not in the center? So to do this, you must think of how fast the ions can move to the other side. Okay, if you think about this, you should know that the ionic mass of so this is like uh, linking to your rate of diffusion. Yeah, so it diffused across it's actually not diffusion lah, but it has the same principle. Okay, it's like uh, humans also when you are bigger in size, it's harder for you to move through a crowd, right? Than if you are very small size. So, if we look at the mass, the ionic mass of iodide is greater than silver ion. Hence, the iodide ions move at a slower rate than silver ions. Thus, they will meet and precipitate near near the cathode. Okay, oh, finally we are at the assignment questions. Question 1. Sodium chloride can conduct electricity in molten and equal state using graphite electrode. Complete the table by filling the formula of the ions that migrate. Da, 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 da. Okay, so molten sodium chloride, there is no choice. We only have one cation and one anion. 
So the ions that migrate to the cathode will be just sodium plus. The ions that mi migrate to the anode is just Cl minus. If you have a solution, we need to consider H plus and OH minus as well. So other than Na plus, we have H plus. Aqueous concentrated sodium chloride, we still have Na plus, H plus. Together we have Cl minus and OH minus as well. Okay. Answer the following questions by referring to the table above. What observations can you make at the cathode and anode for the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride? So when it's molten sodium chloride at the cathode, it is just sodium. Hence, sodium. Uh, let's write down the half equation and then we can say what is the observation. Okay, Na plus liquid state because it's a ion in the liquid state plus electron gives us sodium solid. Okay, so based on this half equation, uh, you can write down what are your observations. Okay, it should be that since any uh, solid is formed, silver produces of Na the form floats to the surface. Second part, uh, the anode. Anode, again, we only have chloride, so it's very simple. Chloride should form your chlorine gas. Uh, balance, I need to have two chloride ions. Then I need to add two electrons on the right-hand side. So, for this reaction, since chlorine gas, oh, I forgot to write this symbol. Since chlorine gas is produced, we should say that uh, effervescence observe. Then we need to discuss what is the color and odor of the gas. So, color yellowish green. Pungent gas is produced. Write the ionic equations. Oh, I just wrote it. So let's just copy and paste this. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. For this, right, it's not a solid state. It is at a liquid state. Because at the temperature that's required to melt sodium chloride, it is actually very high. So, it means that your sodium should likely be also at a liquid state at that particular temperature. Okay, but then um, this part should still hold because this is still a silvery silvery solution, a uh, silvery liquid that floats to the top of the surface. Okay, describe and account for one similarity and one differences in observation during the electrolysis of Okay, so let's look at this. In the case of a dilute solution, we just look at the electrochemical series. So we know that H plus will definitely be the one that is discharged and Hydroxide is the one discharged because if we look at the electrochemical series, if we look at the electrochemical series, H plus uh, will be preferentially reduced over Na plus over here. And then we have uh, hydroxide and your chloride over here. So hydroxide is also lower in the electrochemical series than your chloride. Then but when we have a concentrated solution, we should uh, look at these two. Sodium is still too far away from hydrogen. So it means that hydrogen will still be preferentially reduced. Now over on the other side, 
it is possible to overcome the electrochemical series with concentration effect. So your chloride will be the one that is discharged for concentrated sodium chloride solution. So what is the similar observation? The similar observation should be that at both sides, the hydrogen uh, ions will be used up. So your observation should be at the uh, will it be at the cathode or anode that this will happen? Okay, let's think about it. H plus should move towards to the oh, it's written there. Oh, it's a cathode. Okay, so at the cathode, effervescence. Observe. Colorless. Odorless. Gas evolve, extinguish, uh, lighted flame, uh, lighted splint, lighted splint with pop sound. Okay, explanation will be that. <clears throat> hydrogen ions are lower in electrochemical series as compared to so you always compare the two ions to sodium ions hence it is selectively discharged. So another keyword that you should use is that it must tell me which is selectively discharged, selectively reduced or selectively oxidized. Selectively discharged. Okay, to give H2 gas. Okay, what is the equation? We know it's H plus here. We know that it will give H2 gas. Put a 2 here. So, how many electrons should I have? Okay, I should add 2 electrons to balance the charges. Okay, what's the different observation at the anode? Let's look at B. B is when it's still diluted. Oh, hydroxide is the one that's evolved. Uh, hydroxide is the one that's discharged. So I already know that it will give oxygen gas. So write down the observation of oxygen gas, effervescence. Observe. Okay, it is a colorless, odorless gas that rekindles Okay, for C, we also C, remember that C, chloride is the one that's discharged due to the concentration effect. So, yeah, this part is the same. Okay, so let's guess if all. Extinguish it. What am I doing? Okay, sorry, it's chlorine gas, right? So it is a yellowish green pungent gas evolve. Okay, so what are your explanations? Over at B, 
we need to compare why hydroxide is preferentially discharged over your chloride. So we say that OH- minus ions are lower in the electrochemical series as compared to chloride hence selectively discharged to produce O2 gas. For C is where chlorine is preferentially chloride is preferentially discharged over hydroxide. So we need to say why. So um, S B concentration of chloride ions are is should be is much higher than hydroxide it is referentially discharge what's your mapi referentially discharge over OH minus okay okay let me rest my leg for a while <sighs> okay so equations at the what for both solutions since they want a different one right it must be at the anode for both solutions for B we have um, for OH minus this one I read before already so I just copy down Concentrated one we have Cl minus this last Cl2 plus two electrons. Okay, so that's the answer. Question two. Student investigates the amount of silver that's formed on the negative electrode during electrolysis of silver nitrate. Dun -dun. Measure the mass of the negative electrode at the start. Continue to terminate, dry it, re reconnect. Okay, so this is the mass over time. You can see that as time goes by, the mass increase. Write an ionic half equation to describe the reaction at the negative electrode. Okay, it's the platinum electrode at the negative electrode. So this is negative, this is positive. Negative electrode, what are the ions that move towards here? We have silver as well as your H plus. Over at the other side, at the positive terminal, we have your nitrates as well as your hydroxide. So, between silver and uh, hydrogen, which will be preferentially reduced? Going back to this diagram, again, we can see that silver is below hydrogen in the electrochemical series. So, Silver is the one that will be preferentially uh, preferentially reduced. On the other side, we know that nitrate will never come out. So hydroxide is the one that is preferentially oxidized. At the negative electrode, we know that Ag plus will give Ag solid. So where should I put the electrons? On the left hand side. What general pattern is shown by the results? Um, I think they are asking for a general trend. Okay, so a general trend that you can see is that as time increases the mass 
of electrode increases. The student made an error in the recording of one of the mass readings. Which is it most likely to be an error? Okay, let's look at this. <laughs> Okay, if we look at the readings, right, let's look at the difference in the readings. From here to here, there's an increase of 0 0.41 gram. Okay, from here to here, there's an increase of uh, two, wait, 0 0.24 gram. Here to here, there is an increase of 0.63 gram. Here to here, we have an increase of 0.43 gram. 0.4 gram. 0.4 0.39 Okay, so you see that the increase in the mass, right, should always be around 0.4 gram. But, we'll note that from this point to this point and this point to this point, the jump is like quite strange. Plus 0.24 and then 2 plus 0.63. So it's likely that the one at, at 20 minutes is written wrongly. Okay, why? Oh, so little space, but I say it's so long. Okay. The reading at 20 minutes. Just give this one mark. So we say that we saw a general uh, the rate of increase is around 0 0.4 gram per 10 minutes. So the rate of increase in mass of electrode is about 0 0.4 gram per minute. However, from 10 to 20 minutes, there is an increase of only 0.24 gram and from 20 to 30 minutes, there is an increase of 0 0.6 gram. Okay, the student repeat the experiment, this time using silver electrode. How would his result differ from the, his first experiment? Uh, explain your reasoning. Now note that over here we saw that the mass stopped increasing after 60 minutes. So do you know what is the reason why the mass will stop uh, increasing? Okay, look at yourself again. Think of the reason why the mass of the negative electrode will stop increasing after one hour. Okay, the increase in the mass is due to the silver deposited on the negative electrode, right? Because silver plus ions become silver uh, metal at the negative electrode. So, it means that it stopped because your silver plus ions were used up. Okay, because we don't replenish it. Now, it's different when you are using silver electrodes. Okay, when we use reactive electrodes, um, they, are, they tend to be the one that is oxidized instead of the anions. So, if silver electrodes are used, it's likely that instead of your hydroxide, 
losing electrons to form your oxygen and water it is more likely that your silver will give out electrons to form silver plus ions and electrons okay so this will be preferred over this hence what will be the difference is that after 60 minutes the mass of negative electrode would still continue to increase Okay, why is that so? Uh, if the use of silver electrodes the silver and ion and uh, an anode will be preferentially oxidized to give silver ions. Hence, it replenishes the silver ions that are used up at the cathode and ions are still present after 60 minutes for reduction. Okay, I think that's all right. Yes, that's all. So, thank you for watching this tutorial. Uh, please attempt your, to write your corrections and hand it to me on Monday morning. Thank you.